the first example we saw that initial equation had roots in whose difference was not an integer a fractional number that was type number one of Frobenius equation now we will do type number two of Frobenius method in this type we will see that the initial equation turns out to have two roots whose difference is an integer what do we do then and how do we solve them okay so this is our equation this equation has another name legendary equation and we have come up with a trial solution then it's derivative and then it's double derivative and just like in working rule i'll i'll put these things in the original ode and see what we find out so one y double dash so m equals to zero to infinity m plus k so first i will multiply this thing by one only m plus k minus one cm x to the power m plus k minus 2 then minus x square this term so minus will add in the coefficient and we'll see m plus k m plus k minus 1 cm x to the power m plus k and then we have minus twice x y dash so minus 2 will add in the coefficient and 1 power will be increased in x so minus 2 this term m plus k cm x to the power m plus k and then plus m equals to 0 to infinity n into n plus 1 adds in adds up in the coefficient and simply y value which is cm x to the power k plus m and all this thing has to equal to 0 remember before after we did that what we did was we did our indexing process and put all this generic power in the lowest term you see in here the lowest generic term is m plus k minus 2 so I will have to index this one this one and this one also so I'll rewrite it again m equals to 0 to infinity m plus k m plus k minus 1 first term doesn't need any indexing second term need, needs indexing I have to you I have to make the power m plus k minus 2 so I better substitute substitute m as m minus 2 and m minus 2 equals to 0 makes up m equals to 2 to infinity and then remember I have substituted m as m minus 2 so m plus k minus 2 in here and then m plus k minus 3 in here c m minus 2 in here and then x to the power m plus k minus 2 here and in this equation also substitute m as m minus 2 that will give 2 m plus k minus 2 c m minus 2 x to the power m plus k minus 2 and plus again in this equation also substitute m as m minus 2 so that will give me c m minus 2 x to the power m plus k minus 2 equals to 0 now what was our next step was our next step was is to put m equals to 0 and find out and equate the coefficients of the lower terms of x that means equate the coefficients of x to the power k minus 2 as m equals to 0 you remember <clears throat> then what do we see put m equals to 0 in this term then we'll have then we'll have k k minus 1 c naught and in the rest three terms you cannot really put m equals to 0 because the indexing is only starts from m equals to 2 so plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 has to equals to 0 and c naught cannot be 0 so that mean implies k equals to either 0 or 1 and the difference between the roots is an integer So now what do you do we have found out our indicial roots now we have to find out our recurrence relations to find out the re our recurrence relations we have to equate the coefficients of our generic lowest terms that means x to the power m plus k minus 2 so if we try to equate it we get uh, from this from this term contributes as m plus k m plus k minus 1 cm and then this term contributes as minus m plus k minus 2 m plus k minus 3 c m minus 2 
this term contributes as minus 2 m plus k minus 2 c m minus 2 and this term contributes as n n plus 1 c of m minus 2 and all of this thing has to equal to 0 because in right hand side you also have 0 so if we equate our coefficients and then you can see m plus cm is related to cm minus 2 so you have to really simplify it and if you simplify it by your um, by your high school methods you will come on to this equation cm equals to c m minus 2 m plus k minus 2 whole square plus minus n n plus 1 over m plus k m plus k minus 1 this is just some simplification that I have done you can do it on your own way now you can see in the fourth method what have we learned we have learned that if for both uh, if any term cannot be determined by recurrence relation find that analytically you see that from this recurrence relation you cannot find out m c1 because you cannot put m equals to 1 here this recurrence relation only works for m greater than or equal to 2 so to determine uh, value of c1 we have to find that analytically that means from the ordinary differential equations so in this equation if we have to find out c1 we have to put m equals to 1 so that means put m equals to 1 we have find out k plus 1 and then k plus 1 minus 1 simply k and cm c1 and all these terms cannot be in all these terms we cannot put k equals m equals to 1 because that's not allowed indexing starts from m equals to 2 so that has to equal to 0 and we know already the values of k k equals to 0 and 1 you can see if k equals to 0 suppose for this case then 0 times something becomes 0 0 times c1 equals to 0 and c1 turns out to be 0 over 0 what we call as indeterminant now here is the rule number 2 if one of the coefficients become indeterminate if c1 is indeterminate that means c3 is indeterminate also and c5 c7 and all because they are connected c3 is connected by to c1 c5 is connected to c3 so all the coefficients are indeterminate if the coefficients become indeterminate for some values of k we will only consider that value of k and find out two solution that this value k equals to 1 we will not need that we will consider c1 as another parameter let's see how that will work out now for k equals to 0 our recurrence relation looks out like this cm minus 2 simply put k equals to 0 sorry cm equals to cm minus 2 m minus 2 square minus n n plus 1 and then m n minus 1 and to find out the c2 value you found out uh, you simply substitute m equals to 2 c2 equals to c naught into then it turns out 2 minus 2 squared 0 minus n n plus 1 and then you substitute 2 and 2 minus 1 that gives you 2 and that is minus n n plus 1 over 2 c naught that's the value of c2 if we want to calculate c4 you can calculate it like this just putting it in here would do i'm not going to evaluate that but just for the sake of the reason you can do that now as c1 is indeterminate i'll think of c1 the, the rule is think of c1 as being some number as being a constant and then find out c3 c5 c7 all in terms of c1 so if i try to find out c3 I'll simply put m equals to 3 c3 equals to c1 into then in this equation 3 minus 2 square minus n n plus 1 and 3 into 2 so that gives me value of c1 1 minus n n plus 1 over 6 if you simply if you simplify it so now we have found out c3 value in this way c5 can be expressed as a function of c1 c7 can also be expressed as a function of c1 and so now let's find out our solution we know what y equals to x um, y equals to x to the power k c naught 
प्लस सी वन एक्स प्लस सी टू एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस सी थ्री एक्स क्यूब प्लस सी फोर एक्स फोर डॉट 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 एंड टू गो वन के वैल्यू इज जीरो फॉर दैट वी आर एवेलुएटिंग वी आर इग्नोरिंग के इक्व टू वन सो सी नॉट एंड देन सी वन इज एनदर पैरामीटर सी वन एक्स एंड सी टू वी हैव फाउंड आउट सी टू वैल्यू ओवर हेयर सी टू इक्व टू माइनस एन एन प्लस वन ओवर टू C not x square, then C three value is found here, plus C one, one minus n n plus one by six, x cube plus dot dot dot, that's solution. Now I'll simply take C not terms common and C one terms common, so and x not x to the power zero equals to one, so C not taking C not as common, one minus n n plus one by two x square plus dot dot and taking C one as common. That turns out x minus one minus n n plus one over six x cube plus dot dot dot. So this is our complete solution. You can see it it has two arbitrary constants c not and c one. We have made those two arbitrary constants. C one is becoming indeterminate, and we have treated it like arbitrary constant. And that is the that is the speciality of this form. If one coefficient becomes indeterminate, we'll avoid the other value of indicial equation, and we'll only work with work out with that co that for that value of indicial roots, and then the coefficient which became indeterminate, we'll think of that as another parameter or another constant. So this is example number two.